Hey everybody, Jason here with GDT Basics. Today I want to go over a quick topic, and that is applying position tolerances to countersunk fixed fastener assembly conditions. Specifically, here we have an assembly. The door and a sight glass are being held in by this collar, which has countersunk through holes, and our door has the tapped holes that accept the fasteners. Notice here on the drawing we have a position collar controlling both the conical countersink as well as the screw hole. So for an inspector, we have two checks here. We have the first check checking the position of the through hole, and the second check is going to be checking the position of that countersink. Both of those hole features can have their own positional air because they're likely made with two different processes. So here we're applying nine and a half thousandths to both of those hole features. You could apply a feature control frame to just the countersink feature and just the through hole feature separately with a different feature control frame. If you wish to apply different amounts of positional tolerance to both of those features. And we'll show you the value that can get put in this feature control frame and where they come from and why you might want different values for each of these features. Here's a cross section view of our assembly. We have the fastener, the red collar and the tapped part. And we're going to define a few different values here for us. The first being the MMC of the fastener thread that comes from the machinery's handbook or the fastener's spec, the largest diameter that thread can be. We know that that's 0.3125. And next we have the MMC of the fastener head, the virtual sharp of our fastener, which we know is going to be 0.656. As a designer, we likely don't have control over this value. These are just values that are given us, given to us through the uh, fastener spec or through the machinery's handbook. However, two values that we do have control over is going to be the MMC of the hole, and that is for the through hole and the countersink diameter. Countersink diameter is being defined here by 0.656, and the MMC of the through hole is defined by 0.332. Now this MMC of the hole is usually defined by the tight fit, loose fit, or standard fit that we choose when designing this part. Now we notice that there's no positional error to the countersink, through hole, or the tapped hole. Everything assembles fine and our fastener sits flush with the top of our surface. However, we know that there's always going to be air in the real world. So we have to limit the amount of air using tolerances. Now, if we have a large amount of air in the tapped hole, we see that we're going to have some sort of interference here and the fastener is likely going to sit above that surface of our part. So we limit the position of that tapped hole with some sort of tolerance. And we limit the position of the through hole with some sort of tolerance to ensure that at minimum, there's still enough clearance to assemble this tapped fastener through the through hole. Now, where do the positional values, where do the values that we put in the feature control frame come from to ensure that there will always be an assembly case? Well, we use the fixed fastener formula, which is T1 plus T2 equals H minus F. T1 is going to be the position of the through hole. And T2 is going to be the position of the threaded hole. H is going to be the MMC size of our through hole. And F is going to be the MMC size of our fastener. So if we subtract the MMC of our hole from the MMC of the fastener, that gives us 19 and a half thousandths. And that's the amount of tolerance that we can assign to both T1 and T2, the position of the threaded hole and the position of the through hole. Now you can pick 50% to one and 50% of the other, or you can do a 60, 40. That just depends on designer's preferences, the machining capabilities, your manufacturing capabilities, um, different variables like that. Here we've applied a close to 50, 50% value. Some nice round values is nine and a half thousands will be applied to the through hole and 10 thousands being applied to the tap hole. Now we see radially that only allows us to drift in one direction of five thousandths and drift in the other direction with our through hole with 0 0.00475. Now by aligning these values, we ensure assembly will always occur. As designers, we can play with the 0 0.332 through hole diameter. And that might, if we increase that, that'll give us more opportunity to get position to either the through hole or the tapped hole, as we can see here with the fixed fastener formula. However, as you can see here, the fastener is still sitting above the surface of the part 
And with a countersunk fastener, we likely want the countersunk fastener to be below that surface. So what values can we change in order to make sure that this fastener will always stick, stick flush or below that surface? Well, we can adjust the MMC of that diameter of our countersink. We can increase the diameter, thus allowing more room for that countersunk fastener to sink below that surface. Now, again, we know if there's any positional air to this countersunk feature or any size air to that diameter, we might push that fastener above the surface. So what values can we use for positional air of this countersink and size of the countersink to ensure that we'll always have a flush fastener? Again, we'll use the fixed fastener formula. T1 will be the positional tolerance of the countersink. T2 will be the positional tolerance of the tap hole. H will now be the diameter of our countersink. And S will be the MMC size, that virtual sharp of our fastener. Now, if we subtract the virtual sharp of our fastener from the diameter, we'll see that again, we have a value that has to be distributed amongst T1 and T2. Now, if we wish to control both the through hole and the countersink with the same feature control frame and the same positional tolerance, the position of our through hole has to match the amount of position with our countersink. So we again know that nine and a half thousandths would be applied to the countersink since we're controlling with the same feature control frame. And that leaves us with one variable left to calculate, and that's going to be the MMC side of our hole or the MMC of that countersink diameter. We can calculate 0.6755 would be the MMC size that we want to limit the uh, smallest diameter allowed for that countersink. As long as we're no smaller than this value, we'll ensure a flush fastener every time. So to recap, as designers, we can adjust the diameter of the through hole, the diameter of the countersink, and the position of both to meet design preferences, right? We can use different values. We can lo use loose fit, close fit, tight fit to increase the amount of clearance that we can then send back to the positional tolerance to ensure assembly. And in the same way, we can do that with the MMC of our countersink. We can increase the diameter allowed for that countersink to ensure more flush fit opportunity. Again, all of the values for the MMC of the countersink, the MMC of the hole, when compared to the MMC of our fastener, directly correlates with how much position tolerance we're able to give to the tap part and the countersunk through hole part. The fixed fastener formula calculation that we do with the through hole will ensure assembly. The fixed fastener calculation we do with the countersink diameter will ensure flush fasteners. Hopefully this helps you all out with designing countersunk features and the positional tolerances that go along with them. Our goal is to be your best source for gd and information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand gd and on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our gd and community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our gd and and print reading quizzes. Download helpful charts and access articles written by our training experts.